Hey guys, it's Biggs. I'm trying to be a little bit quieter. My wife's sleeping in the other room. You can see it's dark outside, but I'm heading to the airport first thing in the morning, really bright and early, and I have to get a video taken care of before we leave. And I want to tell you guys about this awesome plant. I've been waiting two years for the magical event to happen. So I want to show you guys this thing. This thing's incredible. Let's take a peek. <laughs> plant comes from southern Africa all the way up to Tanzania. It's like a succulent. It's called Stapelia gigantea. It's pretty cool. At least I think it's pretty cool. It goes by a few weird names in the trade. It's called the toad plant. The Zulu giant. You'll understand that in a bit. But it's more aptly known as the carrion flower because it has an absolutely putrid smelling flower. It's generally fly pollinated, but the flower is definitely worth seeing. Stapelia gigantea is a very variable species with erect spine-free succulent stems growing upwards to eight to 12 inches tall or around 25 centimeters. Stapelias, although succulents, are not cacti, but rather members of the milkweed family. Somewhat unique, maybe even a little bizarre, but overall still incredibly fascinating plants to cultivate. The sections have an almost velvety texture to them is that they got small hirsute hairs on them. They're very, very soft to the touch. There's nothing prickly about it whatsoever. They form large clumps, eight to 10 inches in tall. They're fleshy and they're soft. I think it's a fascinating plant. The reddish color means that, you know, that plant was, that, that section was getting a bit more light. Like, you know, this is a, you know, this is a, is an arid plant. So it's something that would generally be exposed to full sunlight. They use these, these long uh, leaf things for, uh, for storing water in times when water is very scarce. But when they start to bloom, they are incredibly impressive. I'm about to go out of town, so I'm gonna have to show you the videos of some of the other flowers. This one hasn't even finished fully opening. This is actually three lobes. So there's one, two, three, four, five. You can see the definition of the lines in the structure of the flower. And then this other one I think is gonna be sacrificed. It's already starting to wilt and wither. Now there's a couple of factors. One, the plant might be putting more energy into this particular flower and not trying to have both of them. Or there is the chance that it got that one flower bud got a little bit chilled because we are in fall and the temperatures here are starting to plummet. And uh, it definitely, uh, this is not a plant that can tolerate below 10 Celsius. And uh, maybe right by the window, it got a little bit chilled. But just an absolutely outstanding flower. Now here's a bit of a montage of the development, not very easy to film, a time lapse of something that's going to take several days to happen. But here's a time lapse of the floral development. Stapelia gigantea has one of the largest flowers in the plant kingdom. The flowers are carried, as you can see here, near the base of the plant on a short peduncle. And often one to five flowers, but sometimes, as shown, some of the smaller buds are often sacrificed. The flowers themselves, there it is, have a strong smell of decaying flinch, hence the common name, and which attracts the pollination of insects, primarily flies. This is called myophily, meaning pollination of plants by flies. Plants then are thus strictly entomophilus, which means they are strongly associated with insects, the plants occupy a wide diversity of habitats, however, most of them are in tropical, arid regions. Now, you often see this plant grown in rockeries, arid gardens, for their beautiful decorative appearance, their low maintenance, and their incredible beautiful flowers. However, stapelias have a much darker side. 
they're incredibly striking, alluring. But historically, they have been used for numerous medicinal and cultural, dare I say, magical uses. But ingestion of the Stapelia plant can also lead to death, as it is a highly toxic plant. Now, this plant has only been in flower for, it's only been open for a few hours. And even on my kitchen table, it has already attracted flies. So I really didn't expect the flowers to last very long in my care. Because in the fall, all the farmer's fields around us, all the cattle around us, flies are an integral part of our life. And they were definitely attracted to this flower. At some points in time, like uh, I, I remember walking in and looking at the flower at one point in time, and I had five, six, seven flies around it. And not just on the flower itself, on the plant, on the window, on the sill, anywhere near the plant, they were attracted. Flies will often use the, fly, uh, the flowers as a, as a depository for their eggs. Because of the smell, they think it's, it's decaying flesh. And decaying flesh flies will use that as a place as a depository for their eggs because then the, 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 the hatching larvae would then also then have a food source. Here you can see here, I've placed the plant in an opened window facing the farm. And you can see the amount of flies that have accumulated on this one particular window screen, all due to the scent of the carrion flower. It's pretty impressive. Gross, but impressive. Now, carrion flowers grow very easily in all parts of the hot tropics of southern Africa. They grow in direct sunlight throughout the year, and this is important to encourage flowering. The soil should be very well drained, and provided that they are not overwatered and given a warm position, your stapelia will flower successfully seasonally, usually in the fall. It is highly recommended to water them from below, otherwise you risk the run uh, you run the risk of rot. But they are incredible, incredible plants. Just look at the details. These are absolutely fascinating flowers and very rewarding. And the monster is starting to fade. So we had about three days of it fully open and it's starting to fade now. But we have two more coming right there. Potentially two smaller ones coming there as well. So still in time to be putting on a big show. So if you're strange and unusual like me and you like your plants the same way, Stapelia giganta is definitely a plant for you. Thank you for watching, my friends. Till next time, take care.